With the booster connected over USB 4 on this Orion 1 8000 series mini PC, we're seeing some really great gaming performance. I mean, a lot of people would be happy with what this thing's put now. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Orion 1 mini PC, and right along with this, we're going to be testing it with their booster GPU dog. So with the booster connected, we should see some really great performance, and keep in mind the Orion 1 is offered in a few different variants, but the booster dock right now only has a single SKU. This is actually powered by the Radeon RX 7600 MX team. It'll do Oculink or USB 4, but unfortunately this Orion one only has USB 4, but I still think we're gonna see some really great gaming performance out of this mini. Now I've got a lot to test, a lot to go over in this video, but before we get started, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for a long time. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I usually pick up over here are Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off, bringing the price down to $17 for that key. And keep in mind, this will also work with Microsoft Office products. We'll use code ETA, as you can see, brought it down to that $17 price mark. Personally, I use PayPal just to have that security. So we'll go ahead and check out. They're gonna email that code to you. And now we can use that code to activate Windows 10 Pro. I'm gonna head over to my updates and security. We're gonna go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm gonna change product key. I'm gonna paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So again, Herc is offering the Orion 1 with a few different CPU SKUs. I think you can go with the 7735HS, which is definitely an older one with RDNA 2 graphics. But what we have here is the Ryzen 7 8845HS, and this will do up to 64 watts. We've got a full metal chassis, and I've always been a big fan of the look of these. They also have a few different colors that you can opt for. I did test a 7000 series in orange. I believe they have a blue, but in my opinion, this gray does look really good. And with the new Herc, they've got a brand new cooling system. It's full copper and it uses a vapor chamber. From what I've seen so far, it does keep the temps way down. Inside of the box, along with the Orion 1 mini PC, you're gonna get an HDMI cable. They also send over a bracket so we can mount this to the back of our monitor, all the hardware we need, and a 120 watt power supply. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 4. We've also got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a full-size USB 2.0 port. Moving around back, we've got another USB 4 port running at a 40 gig protocol, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. In total, we can do four displays out of this unit, utilizing the HDMI, DisplayPort, and both of those USB 4 ports. The Orion one that I have here is their Pro model, so we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS, and with this we get eight cores, 16 threads, all based on Zen 4, base clock of 3.8 with a boost up to 5.1, we also get those RDNA 3 graphics. It's the Radeon 780M up to 2700 megahertz. The unit I have here has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, but you can upgrade to 64 across the board. Two M.2 2280 NVMe SSDs can be installed internally. We've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro. Getting inside of the Orion 1 to upgrade that RAM and storage is super simple. We've got four screws on the bottom. Once we get this off, we're going to be presented with their new cooling plate. So this is actually full aluminum. We've also got a built-in fan. Basically, it's going to make contact with those NVMe SSDs. It does come with an extra thermal pad, so if you did add another NVMe, not a problem there. And with that built-in fan, it will draw air in and cool the RAM off also. And as you can see, we've got both of those 2280 slots. We can add Gen 4 SSDs in here and dual channel SODIMM RAM. Jumping right into the BIOS, I just wanted to see what we've got here. And it does look like we've got a power limit select. And this was already set to performance, but just keep in mind, you may want to go in here. While your computer's booting up, press delete. It could be set to balanced or quiet. In performance mode, we should be able to boost up to 64 watts. Uh, graphics configuration, we're set at six gigs. We can change this if we want to, but I think six is great for the 780M. CPU configuration, 
core performance boost, but not much else. Now we can definitely get a bit deeper, but I think, you know, having this power limit select is really great. If you want this thing to be cooler and quieter, balanced, or just totally quiet, go to quiet mode. Go ahead and exit and get right into Windows. All right, so here it is. Been up and running for a while. Got a bunch of stuff installed. I've already been running some tests here and everything's been working really well with this little mini PC. Cooling system they implemented here actually works pretty well, even up into the 60 watt TDP area. Haven't hit thermal throttle. As you can see, we've got that 8845HS, 32 gigs of 5600 RAM, and of course the 780M graphics. I personally haven't touched anything in the BIOS. We did take a look at it just to see if there was anything we could change. And yeah, there definitely is. Uh, from CPU-Z, run a bench, 64 watts. And that's great for this 8845HS. We do not have to worry about battery here. Of course, even at around 54 watts, you're gonna probably see the same kind of performance. This will come on down just a bit. So we've got that boost up to 64. Not too bad. Really quick little system. Would be nice if we had Wi-Fi 7 here, but I personally haven't seen many, many PCs with Wi-Fi 7 yet. So Wi-Fi 6E is perfect. Going over to their Indiegogo, just checking everything out, and they do have a few different SKUs. Remember, we've got that 8845HS. You can go with the 7000. I believe they've even got kind of a light version. Not sure what this has, 8 gigs of RAM. 7735HS. So definitely keep an eye out if you're going to pick one of these up. I would go with the real 7000, given we've got those 780M graphics or the 8000 Ryzen's. YouTube, video playback. We'll check out a 4K demo here. Find something. Take this up to 4K. And in my experience with these Ryzen 8000 chips, I've never really run into an issue with 4K video playback. So we're at 4K 60 HDR, and we can do two streams of 4K at 60 from YouTube. I've tested three, and one of them was dropping a few frames here and there. Now this whole system is rated for 8K, at least that 780M is, single stream at 60. And you could do it if you've got an 8K display. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks. We're going to go with Geekbench 6 and then we'll run a GPU benchmark. But one thing I'm really interested in is seeing how this thing performs with the eGPU connected. But with Geekbench 6, looking really great here. Single core, 2623, multi, 12,730. So it's on par with those higher wattage HS8000 series chips. And when it comes to 3D Mark Time Spy, we're right there at 3,351. So yeah, not lacking, you know, when you compare it to other similarly spec mini PCs. But now it's time to test out some real world gaming on that iGPU. And the first one we have here is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 using that built-in benchmark. Got an average of 109 FPS and our 1% low was only 60. I mean, so we're right there. And with these settings, you could definitely play through a lot of these games really well. Next up, we've got Helldivers 2 900p. FSR is set to balance low settings. On this iGPU, we're seeing an average of around 82 FPS, which is more than enough at 900p. And if you wanted to take this up to 1080, you could see similar performance, but you'll need to take FSR to performance. Next up, we've got Fallout 4 medium settings, 1080p. Doing a pretty decent job, but we do get a few dips under 60 there, especially when we've got some nukes going off. Now, I'm sure taking this down to low would really help out, but it's not too bad. I mean, on average, we were at 76 FPS. And finally, for that iGPU gaming, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, low settings, FSR is set to performance, but we are at 1080p, seeing an average of around 74 FPS. So yeah, I mean, with what we've been seeing here, looking just like most of the other 8000 series mini PCs, but with that booster eGPU, we can really up this GPU performance. Again, unfortunately, we do not have Oculink, so we will be running over USB 4, maximum of 40 gigs here, and basically all you need to do is plug it right into the back. And one thing I really love here is that we've got USB 4 on the back of this thing, so it's not sticking out of the front. And with the booster, it does support an M.2 SSD. It also adds extra HDMI, extra USB. I mean, it really expands the storage here. Plus, we get that RX 7600 MXT. And getting this thing set up is super simple. I've already got the PC running, and obviously we were running on the iGPU. 
I've got the booster set up and HDMI is going to come out of one of the HDMI ports on the eGPU. All we need to do is plug in this USB 4 cable. So we'll go to the back of that, back of the PC. And again, I just love having this around back because a lot of the mini PCs we see only have it up front and it really does kind of make it really messy. We'll power on the eGPU and there's actually two modes. When the LED is green, it's going to be running at 100 watts. When it's orange, it's going to be running at 120. So now that we've got the booster eGPU connected, instead of using those Radeon 780M graphics, we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT. But remember, we're connected over USB 4, so this will only do a maximum of 40 gigs. If we had Oculink on the Herc, we could definitely see much better performance, but this will outperform the iGPU for sure. Here's Furmart up here. We've got all the information we need to know. And as you can see, GPU power does boost up to 120 watts. We can bring this down to 100 just by pressing that button. When we get the green light, it'll go down to 100. Press it again. We're at the maximum. So yeah, we should be able to see some pretty decent performance out of this little machine now. And before we get into gameplay, I'll just give you a quick idea here. Remember, on the iGPU, checking out 3D Mark Time Spy, we scored a 3,351, but with the booster connected, we're now up to 9,957. So it's a significant jump, and of course it would be. I mean, we've got a much more powerful GPU connected now. Moving back over to some gaming, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, built-in benchmark, and I left the settings the exact same, same way we tested on the iGPU. And if you remember correctly, by the end we had an average of 109 FPS, now we're up to 203 FPS, and our 1% low is now at 94, up from 60. Helldivers 2, high settings, no FSR, we're seeing averages of around 74. On the iGPU, we were down to 900, low with FSR set to balanced. And finally, we're going back to Cyberpunk 2077, 1080, high, FSR is set to quality, so we did need a little bit of FSR with this eGPU. And keep in mind, there are some games that just don't like eGPUs, be it over USB 4, Thunderbolt, or Oculink. Horizon Forbidden West is one of those games. It just does not like eGPUs. I've tested all kinds of configurations, and I really can't get great performance. But for the most part, it's really going to up that GPU performance. First impressions here, love the form factor and the build quality. We've got a full aluminum chassis here. The cooling system is really awesome. I mean, it's using that vapor chamber and it's got a full copper setup in here. So at 64 watts, the highest temperature I saw was 84 degrees Celsius, which might seem hot to some people, but for these little mini PCs, not bad at all. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning more about the Herc Orion 1 mini PC and the Booster eGPU, I'll leave some links in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.